Okay, let's pray. Father God, we we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time, Lord. We pray that um, we just invite you, Lord, to um, come and have your way among us, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you would lead, that you would strengthen, Lord. Uh, especially, Lord, we just want to pray that you would perfect that which concerns us, Master. That your power, that your presence, Lord, overshadow everything, Father God. All weaknesses, all limitations, Lord, your your supernatural power, Lord, let it just overshadow that, God. And Father, we pray that all our weaknesses will be turned to areas of strength, and all even our perceived limitations, Lord, will be will be turned, Father God, that you will turn things around, Lord, for your good, Master. Yes, Lord, to that end, we commit ourselves, we give you praise, we give you glory. Even as we invite you, Lord, come have your way, come have your way in us, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we give you all the praise and glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so we've been looking at uh, like uh, the importance of the Word of God like in ministering. And we also saw that uh, you know, last class that, well, we, people could actually substitute the Word with something else, right? And, and today we see that, um, like people generally you know preaching from anything you know uh, and not just the word of god right uh, maybe it could be a humanistic teaching it could be some it, it it might sound like a like a moral instruction or it could be you know something to do with politics something to do with you know uh, whatever is happening around but leaving out the word of god now all these things we're not saying that it's it's not relevant. It's not important, right? Making mention of what is happening around us. People should be aware. Um, people should be informed, etc. And like we said, you know, if if we don't teach from the pulpit, from the church, you know, who else will, right? If you, especially on you know some of the sensitive topics, um, you know, uh, maybe it has to do with marriage. Maybe it has to do with parenting. Maybe it has to do with you know so many things. With, uh, about the confusion about gender and so on. If the church will not teach that, then some something else will, right? Popular culture will teach that. Popular culture will address it, and then popular opinion is what everybody will consider, rather than the uh, teaching that comes from the Word of God, right? So, so all these things are relevant, but it has to come from a place of being centered on the Word of God. Right, which means that this, even whatever ideas that we are sharing, has to have the word of God as its reference point. Right. So whatever thoughts that you're putting forward, whatever you know, opinion, uh, whatever you're sharing as information, you know, does it have uh, its root? Does it does it have its source in the word of God? Okay. For example. Right? It, 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 does it have its uh, root in the Word of God in the sense we are saying, you know, does it have a direct reference to the in the Word of God? Or does it have an indirect reference, meaning that principle or that thought is there in the Word? Okay, that principle or the precept behind that whatever you're saying is there in the Word of God. Right? For example, Okay, make hay while the sun shines. What does that mean? Make hay while the sun shines. Yeah, when there is sun that is shining, you have to, you know, make sure that all that process involves, you know, cutting of grass and putting it to drying and all that happens. Make hay while the sun shines, right? Is it there in the Word of God? Is it the scripture in the Word of God? What do you think? Sorry? It's a gentle saying, but that word for word or, or a phrase is not there in the word of God, right? What about um, uh, time and tide wait for no man? Is it there in the word of God? Very sure. <laughs> okay. So, what is the concept behind that? Tide and tide, uh, time and tide wait for no man. What does it mean? OK. 
ओके सो सो या सो इट मींस दैट यू नो टाइम जस्ट गोस बाय राइट इट्स अ नॉन रिन्यूएबल रिसोर्स राइट जस्ट कीप्स टिकिंग टाइम गोस बाय टाइड राइट व्हिच मींस द वेव्स दे दे कम एंड देन दे गो राइट या दे डोंट वेट फॉर यू सो सो द द द प्रोवर्ब or that saying it means time and tide wait for no man which means that you know time just passes by and so the idea is you better be aware of it now that that thought or that principle is there in scripture any verse that you can say and you can refer to about this particular thought of there is a passage of time and we need to be aware of it uh okay daniel says we should use our time without wasting yeah that's the that's your that's a teaching of the proverb right but is there any any verse in scripture which has that same thought there's a time for every purpose there's a time for everything for every purpose under sun but um yeah but doesn't that talk about the right time for doing the right thing right Okay. Any other any other scripture? Um, what about that scripture? It says, uh, you know, let us walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. Right? Um, where is that scripture? Redeeming the time. Okay. Um, for the days are evil. Ephesians five sixteen, right? So Ephesians five verse sixteen uh, says, um, "See then, verse fifteen. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, uh, redeeming the time, because the days are evil." So it means, okay, you you think through your choices, you think through your decisions, um, walk circumspectly, you know, redeeming the time, almost as if you know time can be taken back, right? We know that. actually time cannot be right but then uh, you know you are you're walking you are spending your time wisely okay so that's the thought behind it that the time is a resource so so when we teach when we teach from the word of god sometimes what happens is we could actually teach something as scripture which is actually not scripture right it could be a very popular idea for example a popular um, you know thought now is uh, yolo okay why yo elo which means you only live once so just go for it right you only live once why do why are you doing it why because yolo why are you doing this thing why are you doing behaving like this yolo so that means you only live once okay so now is that scripture or not <laughs> it's not right it's not based on scripture but it's a popular thought it's a popular opinion that or it's a mindset right so that is why we are saying okay our ministering or sharing should be based on the word of god because there could be certain things that we grew up with right maybe tradition maybe culture whatever and we see that as something that is um, that is so ingrained in us it's so part of us right and we think that okay it is the word well the the fact is that uh, the truth is that it is not right so we need to be able to know the difference and also to share something as opinion this is opinion you may we, paul talks about that no in 1 corinthians um uh, he talks about that he says but i am saying yet not you know it's it's not the lord but i say right to i command what is he saying he's saying you know it's not the lord that is saying but i am saying based on experience wisdom whatever i am saying so we could we should not make that mistake of sharing as opinion Uh, something as the word of god it could be an opinion it could be a thought okay so that is why paul also instructs timothy like we saw last class that he instructs timothy about everything coming out of the word of god 
your thoughts, your whatever you're saying, is it make the word of God the basis of it, right? If you're instructing someone, if you're warning someone, right? If you're encouraging someone, let that reference point be the word of God. Let it come out of the, yeah. Go ahead. The common saying that you know when people say like whatever happens to you, it's for the good. Yeah. So that is commonly misinterpreted because yes. the scripture is clear that you know whatever God works for those who love them. Mm. For uh, you know. Yeah. So so the thing is, um, you know, like whatever happens, like you said, whatever happens, it happens for the good. That's a popular thought. It's not scriptural. And because there is an enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Enemy is doing a lot of stealing, stealing, killing, destroying, and we are actually also sometimes intentionally or, or unintentionally make some wrong choices, make some wrong decisions, and we can't say, okay, whatever happens happens for the good. Yes, the Lord redeems it, right? Lord retrieves, redeems. He uh, and all these things work together for good to those who love the Lord, who go back to Him and say, you know, He redeems. But yeah, whatever happens for the, you know, it, that is also, and also, he will turn it for good. Yeah, whatever, whatever the enemy means for, you know, uh, stealing, killing, and destroying, he will turn it on. Another, another popular thought is also in the Christian circles is whatever is God's will will happen. Right? If it's God's will for me, it will happen. Is that correct or wrong? What do you say? Nikhil, like whatever is God's will. Sorry, Vimal, Vimal. No? I said Nikhil. I always get confused. What do you think? If it's God's will, it will happen. What do you think, Diksha? It will, it will happen or not? Saying if it's God's will, it will happen. If it's God's not God's will, it won't happen. Online students. Anything? Your thoughts? Okay, you can use the mic. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so Nelson is saying that if it's yeah, go ahead. Um, if we are obedient to God, then His will will happen in our life. Mm. But if we are not obedient, then it cannot. Yeah. See, the thing is, uh, yeah, uh, saying okay, it will it will happen, right? Uh, I see some responses here. Yes, it will happen. Yes. See, there are certain things where God has planned and it will happen. There's no change. His second coming and all things that he has mentioned, you know, in the fullness of time, all those things that will happen, it's going to happen. It doesn't depend on our voting for it. It doesn't depend whether we agree with it or not. It's going to happen. But there are certain things that, you know, God wants for us as believers. For example, it says that, you know, it's God's will that none should perish. That, that all should come to the saving knowledge. It's God's will. But do per people perish without knowing God's will? Or without knowing God? Yes. right. So that Greek word used there is it's the wish of God. It's a desire of God. right? So God's will for us, it's not like fate. What is fate? Something that is, you know, what is fate? What do you say in Hindi, fate? Huh? No, Vishwas is faith. No, 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 no. What you say is, you know, it is written. It is already written. Huh? Chap. Okay, it's written. Nasib. Huh? Nasib is a. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> ah, exactly. I think that's the thing. Kismat. Okay, it's already written. I can't change, right? So God's will for us. It's it's not like fate. You know, or kismet, right? Because it is you need to cooperate with God. Right? We need to cooperate. God says, Okay, I have, you know, my will for you is that <clears throat> you become a pastor or you be a, you know, by be an evangelist. You establish, you know, my he's saying, God, I got to say, I'm, my dream for you is that you do this work. How is it going to happen? Only when I cooperate, only when I believe his word with faith because only then his word will be effective if i receive it in faith if i believe right so so even this popular opinion that if it's god's will it will happen 
No, it, it depends on our cooperation, right? I cannot Jesus just be passive and say, okay, one day it will happen. No, I could be living a life totally opposite of what God wants, right? So, so these kind of things, right? So, uh, just just to tell us, just to show that our ministering and whatever we are preaching and teaching should be based on the Word of God. That's what we say. You know, it should be central to the Word of God. You know, it should be focused on the Word of God. Um, and when we say that, this is what it means, right? It doesn't mean that, okay, I'm using a lot of scripture verses. Right? You can use scripture verses, but still, you know, it, it need not be based on the Word of God. You know, we could be misquoting, misapplying scripture verses, right? Uh, we need not be always rightly dividing. So that's the thing. Just because our message is full of scripture, doesn't mean it's it's based on the Word of God. When we say it's based on the Word of God, it means that all the, the Word of God is a source. Word of God is our reference point. And whatever we are putting forth as instruction, as inspiration, as, as you know, something for people to follow is coming from that. Right? It's coming from a uh, from the truth of God's word. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's continue to look at um, uh, what we uh, what we saw last class. Uh, about the word, right? We saw that word is like a seed, and uh, and then it's like the sower who see, sows the seed, and, um, and the word of God bears fruit, and those are the reasons why for which why why we you know um, preach the word of God, why we declare the word of God, right? Um, okay, just one second. Okay, so uh, we know while. The, the word of God is like a seed. So there is an individual responsibility or a personal responsibility for what I do with the seed. Okay. So we might be communicating the message, sharing the, preaching the word, but there is an individual personal responsibility to how I receive it, what I do with it, right? Because the Bible talks about uh, meditating on the word, the Bible talks about confessing the word, right? Declaring the word, and so we need to we need to be personally doing that to see that word come to completion, right? And like just Mark four, there are things, there are persecutions that happens because of the word. We don't believe, we, I mean, or we don't understand, and then Satan steals the word, right? There are things that choke the word of God because um, you know things like. Um, uh, Worries or cares or lusts or you know um, our desires for other things like the pride of life and all that it takes away the effectiveness of the word. Okay, so word of God is powerful. Word of God is you know it's from word from from God, right? But it requires our co-working, co-laboring. It requires our action. Okay, okay. Let's. Uh, Let's continue to look at um, some of the objectives in ministering the word. Okay, so we we share the word in order to educate people. Like we share the word in order to inform people. Uh, we share the word in order to see change in the in the listener. Right. Um, so people are when we share the word, people are informed. Okay, some things um, we realize that okay, not everybody knows the information. That you are sharing, right? Not everybody knows what is there in the Word of God in the Bible. So, when you, when we share from the Word of God, uh, people are informed. Okay, what does it mean to be informed? When we, okay, we say, okay, I, I didn't know this information, right? <clears throat> what does it mean? I didn't know this information. Now I know. Sorry. Information, yes, collection of data, which makes sense, right? You're putting together. Um, but basically, you know, information about something that is useful, something that is uh, uh, something that is necessary, right? Um, and so you share that, and then pe people are informed. Like, for example, you know, um, the Bible talks about the fact that we need to acknowledge every good thing that we have in Christ, so that the sharing of our faith may become effective. Okay, Every good thing that we have in Christ. Okay. Which verse is that? 
Anyone? Acknowledge every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus. Okay, let's go to Philemon. Um, so, okay, Philemon verse 6. Okay, let's read from verse 4. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Okay. Acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so what does this verse mean? Philemon 6. What is this verse? What is the meaning of this verse? Anyone? What responsibility does it talk about? All the spiritual blessings that we receive by believing Jesus and... Uh, I'm sorry, what? what tell me. It, it, it refers to uh, all good things that we receive, like spiritual blessings that we receive in Christ. So once we receive it, we can share that experience of, you know, that goodwill of, uh, you know, letting the other persons who are yet to come to the faith of... Mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, true. So, um, but what is the responsibility specifically it says that we need to do? Yeah, so it says acknowledge every good thing, which means uh, acknowledge meaning, okay, to come to an understanding and saying that, yeah, I have this in me. Okay, I have this in me because of the Lord Jesus, because of who I am in Christ Jesus, in connection with the Lord. This is what I have become or this is what i have every good thing that is in you in christ jesus you know if you look at um um 1 corinthians chapter 2 okay let's look at this verse uh, 1 corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 okay this was philemon verse 6 right and now we're looking at uh, 1 corinthians uh, okay, oh, just one second, sorry. Mm -hmm. Philemon 6, right? This is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Okay, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Okay, what does it say? That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Okay, So, what, what has been freely given to us by God? Huh? Salvation, okay. What? Grace, okay. Hmm. The air that we breathe. I'm sorry? The air that we breathe. The air that we breathe. Now, it's talking about in relationship to uh, what we have become, right? That we have, that we may have, uh, it says that the things that have been given to us by God, um, that we may know the things. You know, he's talking about a new creation, right? And we have received the Holy Spirit, and this Holy Spirit is teaching. Why have the Holy Spirit has been given that we might know some of the things that have been, I mean, know the things that have been given to us by God. So in the light of, in the context of us being a new creation. So if you look at that, what are some things that has been freely given to us? Yeah, you can use them like, yeah. So. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? We don't earn it. We, we receive it. We receive freely. Um, we became, okay, Gertrude says, we became sons and daughters of God as our new identity. Okay, so this is something that we have received. Okay, you said something. 
we have the indwelling presence of the holy spirit and he's the one who's actually showing these things right uh, what has been freely given so you know as a believer now you, you are, we are born again we have the indwelling presence of the holy spirit but we may not be aware of all the things that we have received freely from god we may not be aware like for example you be, we may not be aware of all the spiritual weapons that have been given to us we may not be we may be a very sincere believer but we may not be aware of um the spiritual weapons that have been given to us right we may not be aware of the authority that god has given us so so as long as we are not aware of it then we will not use it right if you are aware that you have this then you will use it but if you are not aware if you if you are saying okay I, i didn't even know that like many times it happens right um there maybe there is some government there's some government scheme some government offer some government scholarship something but we are not aware of it right then somebody says hey do you know that you can actually do this you can go to this website you can do this and you can enroll and you will you'll actually you know get this and then say i didn't know right so which means that we were not informed about it right so the bible in our preaching in our sharing in our ministering we inform right so we bring in that understanding we bring in the information that hey this is something that you can have like this is something that is available for you um, that is just one part of it right so acknowledge how can a person acknowledge every good thing that they have in christ first of all they need to know oh i have all these you know these 10 things this 20 things i have in christ jesus only then can i acknowledge and only then does the sharing of my faith become become effective and so i i am a recipient of it i acknowledge it then the ministry of the holy spirit is to show us freely whatever we have received from god the holy spirit does that right that's what we saw the holy spirit uh uh sorry was to have the spirit of the who is from god that we might know the things so the holy spirit actually takes us on a process of knowing hey you have this you have this you have this from god you have the other thing from god so so this information right we minister in the in our ministering in when we minister the word of god we are actually informing people you know knowledge um a uh, spiritual understanding we are actually educating informing people about it so that's that's one thing that happens when we minister so um something new something revelatory something that we have been given right all this is information right and for a person who does not know christ you know this whole aspect of salvation how to receive salvation how to be filled in the holy spirit you know how to walk in authority how to walk in a new identity and and the fact that one does not have to always struggle in sin and you know in that cycle of defeat but we have actually been given victory you know all this is information that we minister to another person right to educate the other person right so you see that powerful you know something very powerful when we minister the word of god like it's it's as if sud- suddenly the lights come on you know in the inside of us it's like when light being switched on right secondly this information does not remain as information as we minister the word of god right because the word of god is powerful when people receive it when people believe it when people use the word of god it brings about change and that change is a drastic change and what we call as transformation right there is a change that uh, the drastic change that happens so we call it transformation it results in transforming a person's life right so this revelation or revelatory teaching or whatever you're proclaiming as revelation that transforms the life of a person is a radical change that is brought about uh, because a person is just receiving the word of god right and i'm sure you know we've sometimes we've meet people after many years and we see that there is a change there is a change in their lives 
there is a change in their attitude uh, what has happened because you know they have taken the word of god you know, and it's it is and there is so much of change total transformation right and for me you know same i've seen that in the life of a person where uh, this person who was who studied with me in college very religious uh, a very um, very strong religious you know person from another faith you know he would go to temples he would wear uh, you know uh, all black and you know grow a beard and uh, certain times of the year and and all that he was like that right then i heard that he had actually come to the lord right then i came to know that oh he's he's not only come to the lord but he's actually is serving the lord right he's a he's a you know he's he's got his job he's serving uh, he's, he's he's working as a you know like a, a software professional or something and but he's serving the lord he's pastoring a church so all this was complete transformation right from how he was how he used to live and what happened that transformation came as a result of him engaging with the word of god because it's not just information but it's something that empowers the person to change the person right brings about lasting change so this lasting change is possible only when there is a ministry of the word of god right the word of god has power the spirit of god empowers the person to um, to change for the better right so there is transformation right so this is something that we need to understand when we handle the word of god right it is not just to okay i they've given some time let me do it no it it is powerful when we honestly sincerely minister the word of god it informs people educates people and also transforms the life of people okay so um so let's look at um uh studying the word of god okay so what are some different ways by which we can study the word of god okay so um so there are at least five ways five different ways by which we can study the word of god okay we, so uh we, we're not talking about just merely uh reading the bible or reading the word of god we're talking about how we can actually study the word of god so studying with an intention of learning uh deeper things with the intention of remembering right so um one of the ways by which we can do a study uh, or study the word of god is when we can do a word study okay so just like uh, the the word the, the, the that phrase itself describes that we do a study on the different words in scripture okay so that's a word study so what does this word mean where does it occur in the bible right so if you look at for example the word love itself right and we know that the word is you know in the greek it is trans translated into different you know there are different words um that um uh, into which it's translated in the greek based based on the context right but in the english we have only one word which is love okay so but there are uh, different words which uh, like for example agape is love phileo is love eros is love storge is also love these are different words which have different you know talk about friendship it talks about um it talks about <coughs> physical love it talks about unconditional love and so on so when we study the word of god when we study when we do a word study sorry then we understand so we okay this is what it means this is how it is used so we get a lot more information like also in the, when you look at the hebrew words for praise right we studied that right in the first test, first uh, semester right different hebrew words like yada and toda and halal and you know tehil uh, tehila and um, and all that shabak and so right so all these different words have a different meaning there is a whole and um, uh, a whole uh, understanding behind it how it is how they do the praise right so when we do a word study we understand we get a you know so there's one way of studying the word of god um we can actually compare two or three translations like we can do a modern translation uh, what are some modern translations which we have we have amplified uh, amplified is a more descriptive uh, thing uh, 
yeah probably the message would be a modern translation um the good news bible would be a very simplified like uh, you know so when you look at these different translations some translations are word for word right so um some translations are thought uh, the whole thought is actually translated the, the idea is translated right it's not necessarily word for word so the new king james is a is a good combination of word for word and the thought right it's a good combination of that new king james um but there are certain other translations which are like the niv would be a like, would be a thought that is translated and some of the modern translation like message and all is definitely it's a thought right uh, that is translated not necessarily the word and if you look at like certain other translations like the pan passion translation uh, it takes certain liberties right in translating the thing but we can use you know two or three different translations to get an understanding like of what this word oh, yeah is, yeah you have a question also sometimes uh, is it good to just go back to see in the original language it was written hebrew greek is that better or is the different type of translations better for yeah so we look at the hebrew and uh, uh, and we know what is the you know the what is the exact meaning of it right and also but when we look at the different translations we see it in context in which it is used right so um so that's that gives the perspective so but definitely the hebrew um, and the greek would give us the meaning exact meaning of it and the like some of the words hebrew words it's very pictorial and picture there's a picture behind it and so it 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 helps us to uh, uh understand the verse a little better and also it helps us to it gives us a revelation of what god was actually saying in this or what the who was saying it like the, for example the psalmist in psalm 23 says surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life right so follow is to go behind someone um, but then when we look at the hebrew word uh, i forget the exact word which is used but that hebrew word has this understanding or this meaning where it has this picture of a lion going after a hungry lion going after a prey like going after it's hunting something so what the psalm is saying is that surely goodness and mercy will just come after me like a hungry lion you know hunting so that's the picture that he has you know that song um uh, what is it song goodness of god you know uses that right your goodness is coming after me you know and uh, sure the goodness of god i will you know uh, declare the goodness of god and so on so so that's a picture that's the idea you know is that the goodness of god the mercy of god the faithfulness of god you know is coming after so when we do a word study we get a deeper you know a, a depth in understanding of um, how it is right so uh, we can study we can use a word study right And so one, for example sorry yeah and one last question pastor it's like last semester i somehow came across this gen z bible so what's your thought and view on i have i've it, never it looks very uh, lucrative in the sense of you know the current generation the way short forms and it's it's more like on a casual like uh, okay okay thing, so mm. so maybe it's you know, uh, i mean it's nice it's, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah, nice to not. read it's uh, it's nice to refer to it maybe um but may not be very helpful in terms of a deeper study yeah but it's definitely good for someone who's starting off or someone who's for whom it's relevant right it's just definitely good but i've never seen one what is it called it's called gen z it's a e version is it print also or no? gen z bible okay i've never seen one okay yeah okay um so yeah so you can do a word study okay another another study is a topical study okay so which means you take a topic now you know let's say just talking about the word study you know the word faith right so what does the bible say about faith okay where does where where how is this word used um in the old testament what is that word what is the hebrew word for faith in the new testament what is the you know uh, because faith belief uh, all that you know all these different words which describe faith right um so when we do a study 
of this one word that we get a complete picture of where it's used and how it's used and the context in which it's used so we get a better understanding so this is a way you know by which we can study now it will take time and it will it will mean that you know you can refer to the concordance and refer you know if you actually turn to the bible most uh, turn to the back of the bible most bibles have this reference right like a kind of a concordance uh, where a particular word is used right you see that you have that in the last few pages so it has a word and it has some references right yeah okay so it like in my bible i'm just looking at this word uh, acceptable okay this word acceptable and it has two old testament references two new testament references now it may not be very exhaustive but it gives us an understanding okay the, you don't have um sab okay so you have your bible has maps also maps yeah it's there no it's the okay some bibles have a bible reading plan okay read your bible through a year and and that is good that could be there and also it might have a concordance so now the yeah sorry concordance yeah so you can also check online right uh, for a concordance or you can even use a, a app like esod how many of you have esod or msod that like esod is something that you can download on your laptop esod and um, also there is something called msod i don't know whether it's a free version or a payable version but msod also you can try which is um, which you can download on your mobiles on your phones right so these are useful so tools that it has a concordance and it can it will help you okay where these words are used in the bible so um so you can look at you know all the places in which it is used the context in which it is this word is used and you uh, you can do a study okay now the next one is a topical study so what does that mean what is a topic how is it different from a word a topical study what is a topic it's a theme right a topic could be you know for now when you when you look at those word faith it is both a word as well as a topic you know what is faith a topic could be yeah fasting a topic could be um uh, healing deliverance uh you know anything that you can think of right so these are topics so what does the bible talk about this topic what does the bible say about this topic you know it's pretty much like what you learned in um um what is that course um systematic theology right systematic theology what did you learn you learned you studied about okay holy spirit what does the bible say old testament new testament salvation right forgiveness of sins what does the bible say right something like that so it's a it's a thematic study so it's a topical study right so that is also a very useful um study uh, when you study the topic you choose a topic and where does this topic occur in the bible right so we can actually categorize it and summarize things and um you know how it is used etc right so um yeah several things several topics we can use uh, again a concordance is a good tool to study uh, study uh, to do a topical study okay okay the third one which we can look at is a character study okay what does that mean character study a person like a character meaning an, an individual uh, a person in the bible like maybe moses maybe like abraham right so you you study about their life right from okay their history who were their parents where were they born uh, what did they do right what are the good things we do that we can learn from what are the, some of the bad things that they did that we can also learn from okay how do they come to know about god and and all those things right um so some positive things some negative things um everything that you can learn from a uh, character study okay so now uh, 
character study, we need to, um, we, we can also t lo look at the character in terms of the timeline of the Bible. Okay, when did this character in the Bible, when did he or she live? What did she or he do? Right. So that, that also helps. Like, for example, when we recently did a study on, on the book of Acts, and when we did the character, it was actually a study of Paul, right, towards the end. So we, we, we see that some of the epistles that were written later uh, by Paul after the you know Roman imprisonment and so on. So it, it just gives us a better understanding of the timeline right, in which these things were written. Some of these prison epistles with, that were written and the Gospels we see that came much later. So that itself is a you know quite quite kind of an eye opener, right? Uh, we re read about all the Gospels that were written, um, you know, post that. So um, that helps us, you know, in the timeline. Okay. Now, what are some things um, we can we can uh, when we're studying the Bible? What are some things that we can ask? You know, what are these major events that happen in this person's life? Okay. Like for example, if you take King David, what are some things that you can remember? Some major things that happened in his life. The way he was anointed, right? Yeah. So David and Goliath is one one big thing, right? Everyone will okay, that's one thing that you know. Uh several things like that, you know, how he uh, how he was tempted, how he fell, and all these things were major events in his life. So those are some things that we can we can ask ourselves. Okay, what are some things, some big things that are happening in his life? Also, character traits. You know, who was he as a person? The Bible talks about the fact that he was a warrior. He is a you know he was a brave person. He was leading sheep. Uh, he was humble as well. He had a heart for God, and we see that. Okay, he wrote these psalms, and he uh, obviously you know had a heart for worship and so on. So the character trait of the person. You begin to understand the person, the traits of the person, right? But also, we also learn some of the flaws of the person, right? Some of the negative things in that person's life, we learn about their flaws. And then so we learn how not to be like that, right? That is also there. Um, but there is one important aspect that we need to consider when we do a character study. Okay, so I'll just mention that and then we'll talk about it more next class. So one thing is we need to understand in which dispensation they lived, meaning was it before the cross, was it after the cross? Very important, right? Because the, some of the things that they did, some of the things that they walked in, wasn't that dispensation. So for us, it may not directly apply, okay? right? For example, they may not have had the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit, whereas we do, right? They may not have had the complete scripture, whereas we do. So when, when we do a character study, we are actually trying to apply certain things in our own lives. Yeah, I see this in this person, and therefore I can apply this in my life. Okay, But we also need to understand that in what dispensation did they live in? Okay, it's a very important thing, right? Okay, so we'll stop here and then we'll come back next class, right? Thank you. God bless. Bye.